All right, I'm Scott Al Miller. It is the 18th of January, 2023, and this is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I have a crazy dog running around behind me. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see her. And today we're trying something a little bit different. I'm recording on the Tascam. I've got the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II set up on the new tripod and uh, trying it out in the garden for the first time. I'm gonna play around with this a bit, especially on these like weekdays when I don't have uh, as much going on. I have an opportunity to kind of play around with this because I really do enjoy, I enjoy playing with the editing. I enjoy playing with the cameras and the uh, audio recording and just getting different things and seeing how it works. And this, I don't really mind holding this in, uh, we'll see how this looks, right? Do you guys mind that I'm holding this? Does it sound a lot better? I like, I like that I can talk a lot lower and you can still hear me. Um, it's nice that I'm not having to project to a camera that's far away and yet I can use a nice lens and everything. This is my, uh, my brand new uh, tripod that I got. Obviously you can't see it, but I got a brand new tripod, uh, while we were in the United States because I needed something a lot more portable. This is half the weight and probably two-thirds the size of my old tripod very much able to just throw it in a bag and carry it with me uh, so it'll make it a lot easier for doing more recording and different scenarios which I look forward to uh, bringing to you guys pretty soon uh, so today is kind of a just a, just an experimentation day to do something different because um, I know when I'm watching the videos I really enjoy seeing a variety of filming and not just the same thing every time and uh, the tripods and the Olympus let me do that anyway today is Wednesday and uh, actually so so yesterday I recorded during the day because it was the uh, the border run so I did all that information and kind of had information overload after I was done with all that I got the uploads going came home came home I was out for a walk watch yesterday's video what by the time I got home and did all the uploads um, uh, we decided we were going out for or we knew we were going to go out we had a birthday party that April was throwing not April's birthday but April was throwing a party uh, this evening at eight o'clock at Via Via, and uh, there was uh, uh, Roberto Reyes was booked to play uh, with just a two-piece uh, band, and uh, so we went out and hung out with a big group of friends celebrating a friend's birthday uh, there at Via Via. So that's where we were for the evening, and we didn't stay out super late, but we were out until uh, they closed Via Via, which is midnight, so eight to midnight, um, and then a small group of them wandered off to. Uh, geckos. I went over to geckos, but only long enough to drop everyone off. And then I headed home with Claudio, my driver, uh, and called it a night because I've got lots to do tomorrow morning is, uh, uh, is today. <laughs> and, uh, I just need some sleep because tomorrow, tomorrow, Thursday, I'm on the early shift. So I don't want to, I don't want to be making myself too exhausted. It's not super early, but it's earlier than I like to get up. Um, so today was, so that was last night. We watched Roberto play. Um, and I got some footage for you guys, so uh, check him out for a second. And, uh, so that was that's a lot of fun. We love going to see. We see him play all over the city on a regular basis. Um, and then today, this morning, we started off. We had uh, coffee this morning, and then I had an early uh, meeting with Alan online uh, that I had to be to. So it was a little bit of an early day, but not super early. Uh, but we had a nice time sitting out here uh, today. And mostly just a work day because uh, it is the middle of the week, and because we were gone yesterday. I, I always say this, right? If we're gone, if anything takes me away for a day, oh, the most beautiful breeze just came through. Um, then I am just in terrible shape for uh for work the next day like things just fall behind so quickly and there's always so many projects waiting for me so that was that was uh uh that and during the week if i'm gone it means there's so many customers who are looking to get a hold of me because they want to discuss things and that's that's great i like doing that as part of my job i hate the fact that if i'm gone for even one day it becomes this big drawn out there's no one to discuss things with we need to talk to scott and then it just it just builds and builds so that part i don't like but i do like that that's what i get to do much of the time um it's really not that different from what what I do with you guys, except here we're talking about Nicaragua and travel and relocation and living abroad and, and this very uh, fun living thing. Um, and at work, I'm talking about the value of, of different uh, services for business and talking about, um, uh, you know, employee efficiency and security systems and uh, providing maximum value to shareholders and those kinds of things. So being a CIO, it's a very different, uh, very different role uh, from this. So one of the reasons why I really enjoy having the variety. <sighs> Coming up, 
tomorrow is going to tomorrow Thursday is going to be a very big work day. But Friday, which is another reason why today and tomorrow is so busy, I am taking Friday morning off to film for you. Not really. I'm actually filming for April, but um, April that we went to uh, Via Via with last night. Um, we are filming uh, Casa Mango, her new uh, uh, Airbnb set of properties uh, in El Centro uh, next to the Hotel Cacique um, um, Adiact. And that's going to be really awesome because she's an interior designer and oversaw the entire construction. And it's a really, really beautiful. I've got to see it when she first bought it. So nothing was done. And I've uh, heard some things. I know a bit of what's going on, but there's a lot I don't know. So I'm really looking forward to getting to check that out. And I'm going to be there photographing it. So if you check my Flickr feed, by the time this is posted, everything will be on Flickr. So hundreds of pictures, I guarantee, will be on Flickr. Um, I'm taking lots of cameras. So you see different things uh, from, from just photographs of the property. But we're going to hopefully do a walkthrough as well. So on Friday, look for that to be posted uh, doing a walkthrough of Casa Mango. Um, so today, our topic today, because nothing to talk about but work other than the stuff that's coming up, is, and and someone brought this up, a couple of people brought this up on the channel in, in the comments, because we talk about residency here, we talk about, you know, people who come from the United States or whatever. For those of you coming from the United, the United States, something that's actually really important that we often overlook both in discussing it and for people who are who are doing their planning to move abroad, the state that you move from, the state in which you have residency, because as an American, some state will always claim you. And if you do nothing else, it will be the state of your last residence. Right. I have. <laughs> She's off camera, I'm sure. But right over here, Mia is being absolutely crazy with the tree. She's like hunting all around and stuff. It's, it's very funny and distracting. The dogs are so interesting out here in the garden. I wish I had a remote to, to swing the camera over for you. Um, add that to my, my long list of, of equipment that I need for the cameras. Remote to, to, there is actually some equipment that I wish I had that would allow me to walk and the, and the really good camera would track me through the yard. That would be really cool someday, right? I actually own a lot of that, but uh, the camera that I have doesn't work with that. I'm really interested in the new Panasonic that just released, but I really want the Fuji that did. Like, ah, oh, and I, I, I'm not going to pay for any of them, right? So, the, um, so the thing about states, right? Different states give you different rights and powers when you move abroad, and the one we talk about most, and by far is the most important, is your state taxes. When you move abroad, you still owe your state taxes. So when we say you're leaving the United States, and you can be tax-free, like that's a complex statement, right? It's foreign during income exclusion and exemption. And you have to go watch my video on that. It's it's not completely free and it's, you know, but it's, it's a huge number. It's, it's essentially free. You don't pay taxes, but that's U.S. federal taxes. That does not include your state taxes. So if you're coming from uh, New York, for example, you would still owe about 7% of your income in taxes. Now, of course, that's a tiny fraction of what your federal income tax would normally be. So it's still a huge windfall, completely a game changer, but you're still both paying and filing that state tax. Now, keep in mind, you're always going to file your federal tax no matter what. But that's a given, right? You're not going to get away from that without giving up your citizenship. And that's a pretty big deal. Very few people will even talk about that. And I'm not suggesting that anyone does. But th that's just something you carry with you. But the ne need to file your state taxes represents an entire new level of effort. And you have to pay those taxes, which of course is terrible uh, for anybody, whether you live there or not. Uh, but if you don't live there, it's extra terrible because you're paying all these taxes for which you get nothing. Um, Depending on the state you come from, that may not exist. States like Texas, Florida, and Tennessee, along with others, have no state taxes. This is a twofold benefit. The obvious, obvious, obvious one, you're not going to pay those taxes. If New York has a 7% tax and Texas has a zero, that's 7% more of your income in your pocket if you're paying, if you have any kind of income that you wouldn't have had otherwise. And so that's that's potentially huge. If you're making a very large sum of money, say $100,000 US per year, that's $7,000. That's the difference between earning 93K take home and 100K take home, which in purchasing power parity is, is like the difference between $185,000 and $200,000 of spending money uh, just by, uh, depending on which state you left from, which one you established residency in before you left. Now, most states fall somewhere in between New York's and the high side, Texas is zero. Uh, but many people who are looking to move abroad, uh, whether uh, to a single location or to many, uh, will look to get out of that state tax as well. And the foreign earned income exemption from the federal government may or may not apply to the state. I do not know any states to which it applies before someone asks. 
Uh, but in theory, it could. But all the states that I know, you still pay your taxes. They don't care if you're in the state or not. The only time you get an exemption is if you're in another state part of the time and you're paying half to one state and half to another. A lot of states will allow for that. But it's because someone's getting the taxes, just not them. With, uh, with Texas or, or Florida or whatever, you're getting zero taxes. So for us, we, we moved to Texas. Of course, we moved 11 years before we moved abroad, so we were very established. But taking the time to establish yourself in one of those uh, states gives you a lot of benefits. One is that. The second is that you simply don't have to file. Having to do paperwork for that kind of stuff is just a pain, and a lot of people don't want to do it. It's really nice to just eliminate that and not have to worry about it. There's a third benefit. And that benefit is, should you need to return to the United States for any reason? And most of us do on a regular basis. From here, in this region of the world, I'm not just talking about Nicaragua. Of course, specifically, that's where I am. But if you're talking about Mexico, Guatemala, Panama, Colombia, Argentina, everywhere in Latin America, and many places in uh, abroad, east and west, will fly directly, or in some cases, Mexico drive directly into Texas or Florida as their point of entry, Dallas, Houston, and Miami, or Fort Lauderdale, being very, very major international points of entry to the United States for Latin America. Uh, here in Nicaragua, all three of them are our direct cities. In the future, Los Angeles will probably return to that list. It has been in the past, and to many uh, places in Latin America, it is still on the list of potentials, but tax, uh, California has very, very high taxes in general and not a good candidate as a home base. But Texas and Florida, with all those points of entry, that means if you do need to keep anything such as a P.O. box, or you need to deal with physical mail, or you need to have a storage unit, or you need to uh, deal with a, a driver's license renewal, anything like that, because you are still a citizen of the United States, you are still uh, a citizen of those states, Texas, Florida, whatever, um, you may have paperwork that you need to do, and making that paperwork as easy as possible is important to your overall. If you if you were Illinois was your home state, then you'd have to fly through Miami and then fly to Chicago and then get to your, and then deal with everything in Illinois and pay Illinois taxes and then fly back even if you only do it once in a while, it's a lot of extra cost, a lot of extra effort that you can potentially eliminate. And so that's something that's often overlooked. And on top of that, now, if you're someplace like Illinois or New York, there is very cheap land. You could have a very low cost rural house in those places, and it, it really wouldn't be too bad. In Texas and Florida, you can as well, but there's a lot more choices. They tend to be very cheap states, although that, that is starting to change. But in general, there's lots of rural low cost options in those states where you could spend less. But one of the reasons that they're able to keep their, their uh, income taxes so low is that things like their sales tax and property taxes are much higher. Well, if you are a resident there but not living there, uh, then you only have to worry about the, the income tax, not the, the sales and property taxes. So the way in which they tax you doesn't affect you. You get maximum benefit for paying the minimum amount. So I highly recommend looking at those states um, specifically, and it doesn't matter how much you ideologically identify with those states or don't like their weather or don't like their cities or don't. It's really not what this is about. It's about these are the states that give you the maximum benefits when moving abroad. And, um, and, and those numbers can be significant, right? That's really important to remember. We're not talking about pennies. We're not talking about a trivial thing. We're talking about massive life-changing numbers in many cases uh, and making your life much easier. For those of you who are younger and have kids and have to worry about school, uh, that is also something that we had to think about. And one of the reasons that we chose Texas 11 years ago is because coming from New York, uh, we were very curtailed in what our options were to educate overseas. Homeschool was essentially forbidden. Foreign schools are allowed, but the state will determine which ones you may or may not use. There's a lot of regulations and they have the right to pull your passport if they don't like your educational choices. Uh, while I commend them on taking a firm hand on making sure people do get their children educated, these are not, the United States is not known for having a good education mentality for children and that is not how the system is being used it is used to keep people in the tax system to keep kids in new york schools uh, it is used to prop up a failing education program rather than enforcing the need for proper education so while the idea could be good the execution is not uh, texas especially very, very free with homeschooling, foreign schooling, online schooling, whatever you want. And I'm very happy that not only does Texas give us 
the ability to do what we want. And, and we simply have to say, look, this is how we're educating our kids. We just tell them and they say, okay, we're going to put that on record. And it's the easiest I've, I've heard of any place to deal with. Um, other places that are good for that include Connecticut and New Jersey, but uh, they have high taxes. Texas has the advantage of no taxes and great educational opportunities. Basically, Texas will not do anything to stop you from educating your children many other states will actually interfere with your children getting a good education if it does not benefit the state. Um, but Texas then goes a step farther and says, do whatever you feel is best, go as hard, teach as much, as early, as hard, as advanced, as much extracurricular as you want, just go crazy. Right? New York will say, nope, too much. Stop educating so much because you're not allowed to get in front of the, the public school. You can't show up the school system. You have to hold your kids back if you're going to do that. It's terrible. Right? The rules aren't do, do better. It's do worse. Uh, Texas is, well, we're not going to make you do better, but we're going to give you every opportunity to. If you want to do better, just go for it. They also say, if you want state resources like online formal schooling or partial online or just an informal online or just resources from the, from the state... All of those things are available for free to those of us coming from Texas. And so should we need them, we can reach out to the state of Texas and say, you know what, our kids want to switch from a, a study on their own homeschool system to an online Texas system or just for certain classes or they'd like to participate in the university system or whatever. We can simply reach out to Texas and Texas is there. How can we help? Let us know. Right. And it's a completely different experience than in many other states. Some states are great. I'm not saying there aren't other great states. Right. Um, but the great state of Texas in this case comes through as the great state of Texas uh, in allowing those who want to take care of their children to do the best job. Uh, they don't get in the way. That comes at a cost of those who want to do nothing are left to their own accords. And that is unfortunate. But the, there's a it's a difficult balance to find. But you as a world traveler, you as someone who's looking to leave the United States temporarily long term, having established a residency in a state that gives you the power to take care of your education, even if you, you know, you're going to send your kids to a to school that New York would be happy with and everything would be fine. And it doesn't matter what state you come from. You still have more paperwork and more worries when doing it from New York than doing it from Texas. Do the same thing, but Texas will make it easier for you and uh, allow you to adjust as needed, allow your kids to take time off and switch their schedules and just whatever needs to be done, uh, all while you have more money to do so. Take the money that you're saving and not paying state tax and pay for a better tutor, pay for a better private school, pay for whatever is necessary, pay for uh, your kids to have, uh, your, your kids are interested in, in chemistry, use that extra money to go buy them a small chemistry business and let them experiment on a scale that they would never get in the United States because it would be too expensive with that extra income, that lower cost, you can do things you would never be able to do somewhere else. The educational opportunities that come from traveling abroad are sometimes pretty extreme. We just have to realize that they're there and embrace them when the opportunity comes up. That is our day. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Ask any questions, get down below. I want to see everybody talking. What state are you looking at moving from? Have you thought about this before? Or is this something that caught you off guard? Uh, I think a lot of people are caught off guard uh, when they come to move down. And then they're like, oh, you, you switched your state residency before you moved. I should have done that. What do I do now? And it can be complicated. So something to think about early because it's an adjustment you can make quite quickly on and uh, and make a huge difference. Share with your friends, uh, put it on social media, post links wherever, get on Reddit, tell people about the show. Uh, don't put it on the Nicaragua feed. They get really weird and political about every little thing. Don't even bother. And uh, put it on Twitter, whatever. And uh, I will see all of you tomorrow. Oh, yeah.